Yo guys, welcome to the Rumble Man channel. In today's video, we are checking out a bass guitar that has a heritage just as rich as the tones you can get from these active pickups. Ladies and gentlemen, the Quartz Kerbo Retro 4. Make sure you stick with me. So guys, welcome back to the Rumbling Man channel. If this is your first time here, this is a guitar and bass channel where we look at all gear we can related to guitar and bass. And we have an awesome time, so make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, to see more videos just like this one. Today's video is part of our Vintage Artifact series. In this playlist, we look at basses and guitars that are no longer made, but have a really cool story or a really cool element to them that makes them absolutely worth celebrating. And I've been very blessed, like in the past week or two, to do a whole bunch of basses, uh, and today is very possibly my favorite of the ones that I have done. So guys, here it is, the Court Kerbo Retro 4 bass guitar. And if you're familiar with the Court Kerbos, then the first thing you'll notice is that this one looks a little different than the ones you're used to seeing. And it's a very interesting story how they came to be. Um, I've actually been familiar with the Court Kerbo basses for at least 10 years. Uh, there was a time when I was actually looking at very possibly getting one. Um, I never did, but I'm really glad to have the opportunity to check this one out today. Many of the Court Kerbo basses were actually made in terms of the body of Luthite. And Luthite is a lightweight synthetic material developed by the Westheimer Corporation. And it was developed specifically for the production uh, of electric and bass guitars. It's essentially a synthetic wood. And while Jack L. Westheimer did a good job pulling off the production of a synthetic wood body, most bass players absolutely do not prefer it. And this bass was actually called the Retro 4, in which Greg Kerbo, the designer of these basses, wanted to go a little more old school and a little more retro. Active pickups, and essentially the way the controls work is you have a volume knob for each pickup, and then right here, what we have is a bass boost and cut switch. Um, it has a notch filter right in the middle so that you can kind of feel when you're in the middle of uh, the bass cut or the bass boost. And then you can go one way or the other to boost uh, the low end or to cut the low end and have more of a trebly, uh, tinny kind of sound. And it's interesting because there's a lot of features packed into this bass and it's pretty sweet. I actually really, really like it. I really like the neck, uh, which is finished in kind of a semi-gloss. Now you can see here, you can tell that this is actually um, a scarfed neck joint uh, in which the headstock is added to the neck of the guitar, but that's not a problem at all. Everything looks great. And just playing this bass today, it's a thrill to play. You can really get around on it fast uh, and it plays like lightning. And the cool thing about it is you have all these great features and this bass around the time it came out in 2004 only cost around $200, $250. So it was affordable and you could get it in your hands and really get to crank it out some great tones with a four string or a five string version. And you could do so for not a lot of money. But while many of the Kerbos were affordable basses, their legacy is not an affordable legacy because the designer of the Kerbo basses also made some of the greatest high end boutique bass guitars of all time. It all started with a man named Greg Kerbo. Greg was a shop owner, a guitar tech, and also a builder of stringed instruments, specifically bass guitars. And he became very famous for making Kerbo basses, which he made himself in Georgia, often only cranking out six basses per year because it took so much money and focus uh, to craft these incredible and beautiful instruments that he crafted. 
Nonetheless, even though he had his own store in Georgia for a while, and even though he guitar teched for Led Zeppelin guitarist Jimmy Page for a while, he was most famous for making these exquisite basses with this very notable shape. Now, Mr. Kerbo made these high-end boutique basses throughout his life, but it appears that he first teamed up with Cord to make the Cord Kerbo bass in 1998, or at least that's the year that most say uh, the Cord Kerbo first came to be. Uh, while I'm sure it was developed in 1998 and even released, uh, I haven't seen it in old catalogs until the year 2000 or 2001. Now, while Cord might tell you that Cord and Greg Kerbo worked together in designing these bases, really they were designed by Greg Kerbo himself and they were manufactured by Court, many of them being made in Indonesia. Now this Court Kerbo Retro Edition was actually released uh, in 2004, and today it's actually pretty rare to find one. They came in black and sunburst. They look just like this, and I believe there was a five string version as well. Uh, they certainly hyped them up when they came out in 2004, and I believe that, you know, I believe that Greg Kerbo was very proud of his creation. In fact, you can read right here what he said about it on his website. Here it is. The new Kerbo Retro by Court, the latest in the line of great quality designs by Greg Kerbo, manufactured by Court. Just released, this baby has two active jazz style pickups with two volume knobs and one tone knob, a solid brass chrome plated bridge, maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard, a gaithis body, and ultra glide high precision tuners. Truly a slamming bass with a vintage look and feel that reaches for the future, available in both black and sunburst directly from Kerbo. And it's interesting, I did find, um, you know, Greg Kerbo's archived website that was last updated probably around 2004, and he was very much working out of his shop in Georgia. Um, honestly, it, it appears that the Court Kerbo bases, especially this retro one, I mean, yes, you could get them from Court, but it looks like you also could have ordered one directly from Greg himself. But tragically, maybe a year or so after these bases were released, uh, in August of 2005, uh, Greg Kerbo passed away. And though he's no longer with us, his legacy very much lives on. People will tell you that he was a kind and loving guy. He, uh, he really liked to get to know the people who would come to him to have bases built. And uh, he seems like he was just a great dude uh, who loved to make excellent creations. In 2012, Mr. Kerbo's legacy was uh, continued by Court as Court announced the Kerbo series basis for 2012, uh, resurrecting the series, uh, which included the Kerbo 41, Kerbo 42, Kerbo 51, and Kerbo 52. And these were really cool bases. These bases featured sturdy bolt-on necks, soft maple bodies, and Bartolini electronics with a slap switch system. Today, the Kerbo bases are no longer in production, but we will definitely be honoring them as much as we possibly can right here uh, on the Rumbling Man channel. <laughs> To me, it's incredibly cool that they made a base like this, especially at an affordable price point to where anybody potentially could have afforded one of these bass guitars. I love that they went retro and went with a couple jazz bass pickups, that they kept it active but kept it simple. And obviously, as you can hear you know, in today's demos, it's great for rock tones and it's great for funk and slap tones. It's a really versatile bass and it plays like an absolute dream. In a statement released by Greg Kerbo's wife, Margaret, shortly after his passing, uh, she said some words about him that I find to be uh, really beautiful, and I just want to read a quick excerpt for you. Greg Kerbo is credited with numerous innovations in his use of new materials, design, and stylistic details. Many features of current bass design first appeared on Greg's instruments. Kerbo experimented with materials intended to enhance the sound and playability of his instruments. His ideas are now commonly used in musical instrument manufacturing. 
And she went on to say, Greg Kerbo had the capacity to envision an idea and translate that idea into reality. He believed that's what makes an artist a luthier and a luthier an artist. He was continually excited by the possibilities for future instruments. According to Kerbo, there is no reason to believe that we have reached the end of the evolutionary road for the guitar or musical instruments in general. The state of the art is constantly changing. We are all building on one another's contributions. Greg Kerbo's own personal and professional contributions will continue to be appreciated. What a legacy. And that's what the Vintage Artifacts series is all about. Even though sometimes I will review a bass that I don't particularly care for, this series is about celebrating creators and creations that have helped to shape our tone and our music and change the world. Big special thanks to Jeff for making today's video possible. Uh, this is from his personal collection, and Jeff has been a big help to the Rumbling Man channel and is a very valuable insider. So Jeff, thank you so much uh, for allowing me to review this excellent piece of history today. So guys, that about wraps up today's video. Have you played a Court Kerbo bass? Do you have any inside information about how they were made, when they were released, etc.? Go on and tell us what you know in the comments of this video. And make sure you're subscribed to the Rumbling Man channel and we're gonna have a great time. Also on the end screen, there will be a way that you can click to stay on this playlist of vintage artifacts and check out some other sweet, old bases that I have reviewed. If you enjoyed today's video, go and give me a thumbs up button and you can hit me up on social media, Instagram and Facebook, but it all ultimately points right back here to the Rumbling Man YouTube channel where we have a great time. I'm also on Patreon. I did lose my work with uh, COVID-19 and for a couple months, YouTube's been the only thing I've been doing. Uh, hopefully work will pick back up for me soon. Uh, but in the meantime, if you would be willing to become a patron and support the channel that way, I'd love to have you along for the journey and love to have you in the Insiders Facebook group. But that said, there is never any pressure from me to do that because my goal is for you to be blessed by the content we produce. All right. So thanks so much for being here on the channel today. God bless you guys. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace. Peace.